What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Turf Therapy. So in this episode, it's gonna be a little bit different. So when I went over to Cam's house to record a couple videos, one on summer stress and another one on microclimates, we decided while we were there that we would build this DIY kit for our homegirl, PJ. All right, so me and my man Cam, we skipped down the lows and we picked up a 56 volt, 20 inch Ego mower. Now we didn't get the propelled powered assisted mower. We just went ahead and got the basic mower. And we also picked up all of the parts that we were gonna need to execute this. Those parts are, hold up, wait, let me get my notes. Cause there's no way for me to remember it all. So you're gonna need two six inch corner braces right? They look like angles, 90 degree angles. Get two of those six inches. Then you're going to want to get you some one quarter by three quarter flat washers, right? You're going to want to get some Phillips machine screws. I believe we got the number eight. Double check while you're in the store. You're going to want to pick up two clevis pins, specifically the half inch by two inch clevis pins. And then right while you're by those clevis pins, go ahead and get you two maybe four hitch pins, just in case you lose one on a rainy day or something like that. And make sure that they fit the holes for the clevis pins. You're gonna need a half inch drill bit that's for metal. Of course, you're gonna need a power drill. I hope that you have one of those at home and don't necessarily need to buy one. You're also gonna to wanna to get a three inch PVC pipe, about 25 to 28 inches. I'll tell you why later. You're also gonna to wanna to pick up one one and a quarter by 18 inch PVC pipe with both of the end caps, okay? And then last but not least, you're also going to want some locking washers and we'll get into that as well. Now, when we got back to the house, the first thing that we did was we removed the wheels, which is relatively easy. On our model, there was a little slit in the plastic hubcap that covers the um, bolt that fixes the tires inside of the wheel mounting area get a flathead screwdriver and pop that cap right off then you're going to want to get you a 14 millimeter socket screw you're going to go ahead and take those bolts off and then slide the wheels off put them to the side put the screws back together so you won't lose them because we'll need them later Let's get on to the mounting portion. So the mounting location that we chose on this Ego is really the only place that we found that we could make this work. And it's going to be where that safety trail flap is. Now the safety trail flap has a Phillips head screw on both sides of the tail flap. Go ahead and remove those out of there and just simply remove the tail flap. It's really that easy. Now, once you remove the tail flap, you're gonna to wanna to get the measurement from each mounting point from one side to the other. I can't recall exact, exactly how long that length was, but I believe it was about 18 inches, but do me a favor and measure it for yourself. Measure twice, cut once, you know what I mean? Now, once you have that measured out, we can move on to the next important part, which is arguably probably the most important part of the whole thing. Now you're gonna to wanna to take your three inch PVC pipe and you're gonna measure the length of that mounting point and make sure you mark them very clearly. But after you mark them very clearly, I want you to use some type of leveling device or an angle, a square angle, so that you can make sure that you get a straight, precise line from each hole to the other. This is gonna ensure that that PVC pipe lays flat on your lawn and it doesn't give too much play or offset it too much. Now, after you have those holes marked, go ahead and take your one inch drill bit and drill out the two holes where the clevis pins will enter that portion. Now, the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is prepare those corner brackets. Now, the hole that's on that corner bracket is not wide enough to fit a half inch clevis pin. So we're gonna to need to open that hole up on the corner bracket just a little bit more. Now, once you have bored out that hole, you're good to go. So the next step is fairly easy. You're gonna take those same corner brackets and then you're gonna mount them onto the mower in those holes where we removed the trail flap. Now, you're gonna to wanna to have a washer on both sides of the bolt of that screw that you're using. Now on the outside of that second washer inside of the mounting point, 
go ahead and throw that locking washer there so we can make sure that it stays in place and the screw doesn't fly off in the middle of a mug. Now, tighten them, but leave a little bit of play. This thing is made out of plastic. It's a very quality, high grade plastic, but nevertheless, it's a plastic, which is why we went so light on the fill. Now, speaking of the fill, that 18 inch steel pipe, you're gonna go ahead and take both of those end caps, screw them on as much as possible. And as far as the PVC pipe and how wide you wanna cut it, we went with 22 inches. Now, you can go with the, the exact width of the mower if you like, but we figured we'd kick it out a little bit just to have the lines a little bit more flush when our friend PJ went to mow and lay down some stripes. After you have those end caps secured on the steel cap, you will simply place that steel pipe inside of the three inch PVC pipe. And now this is where it becomes up to you as the user as to how much weight you wanna put on it. Now, with this whole setup, this kit weighs about six pounds. And there's one more part that I forgot to tell you to get, and you're gonna to wanna to get some end caps for that three inch PVC pipe. So once everything's tightly secured in there, you can either glue it if you're never gonna change it, or you can easily just place a little bit of duct tape on there. Cause duct tape, well, we know it fixes everything. And that's pretty much it guys. One of the coolest features about this DIY kit is the hitch pins that run through the clevis pins. When you're not trying to stripe your lawn, just go ahead and remove the hitch pins, then remove the actual striper from the back of it you know with the clevis pins take those out and then go ahead and tighten up those corner brackets so they don't drag on the ground behind you and you should be good to mow or you can take the whole thing apart and place the uh trail flap back on uh and that's pretty much it guys now so cam did his own version of this video if i didn't check all the boxes for you so go over there and check out his video if you want more information as far as how we built it but to see this thing in action you're gonna go have to check out girls lawn the link to her video is in the description be below and i'll throw it in the eye in the top right corner again for you for easy use and then on the end cards of this video you'll find a link to both of their videos cam and pj's as far as their perspective with this DIY stripe kit. I know the ego community has been dying to figure out how to stripe. And there's a lot of different ways to make this happen. This is not the end all be all. Matter of fact, maybe we'll call this the we work in prototype one striper kit for the ego. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure PJ is going to find ways to improve and modify this tool. That pretty much wraps this video up guys. I'll check you next time for another episode of Turf Therapy where we're healing lungs and souls. And I'll see you next time for your weekly dose of therapy with Rob.